speak to my heart, oh God. You know, I really love this little book. It's kind of fun. You know, but that's what I always say about all my devotionals. So, <laughs> I guess that's getting kind of old, isn't it? Uh, it's like coffee, you know, you acquire a taste and you enjoy that flavor. And for you, it may be different, you know. You may have a devotional that is a structured reading plan, like when your audio Bible or when your Bible blog or a three-year plan or something that's organized in such a way that you have a certain structure to your life and your discipleship and your reading so that you treat that as a devotional. And you know, that's good. That is positive. Matter of fact, that's one of the things that most people recommend is to have a daily reading plan. It's to be able to program your mind and your heart and your soul to be filled with the Word of God, as the Bible says, that when thou risest up, when thou eatest, when thou sleepest, when thou goest on the way, when you are talking, when you're thinking, when you're doing almost anything, he says, let this Word of the Lord you know, be upon thy mind. And even the Scripture says that to put it as frontlets, which, to be honest with you, I you know, have seen the phylactery. I know what you know they are, tefillin. I know how to lay tefillin. As most people don't know, what lay to fill in is different than putting on to fill in because when you put on to fill in, that's like somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. When you lay to fill in, that's when a Jew says, Guess what? He's putting on to fill in. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> of course not. Because it's kind of a silly way to be thinking about the word of the Lord that's in a box, you know, and you got to keep them contained there and slap it on your forehead so you remember. It don't work that way. Sorry, it's just a mindful little thing that it's like a prayer napkin or like a cross that you, you know, look at in order to be reminded of something. You know, a post-it note worked just so well. But if you could be mindful of the Lord always, what do you need those things for? Put on the mind of Christ. So, I really like Kay Arthur because, you know, if I'd have been a Christian and found her earlier in my life instead of later, it'd have been a lot of fun. I might have gone after that ministry and tried to be a part of it. <laughs> Who knows? The Lord had me where I'm supposed to be. Uh, but as always, when you think when you think you can tolerate sin in your life, do you know what an awesome thing it is to serve God, to bear His name? God is a God of love, a God of mercy. And when we fail Him, we can know that His compassions are new every morning and His mercies fail not. Lamentations 3.22.23 Yet because God is also holy, just, and righteous in all his ways, we must remember that his judgments begins within his own household and with his own children. He starts there. 1 Peter 4.17 Be sure your sin will find you out. God warned the children of Israel, more specifically the sons of Reuben and Gad, in Numbers 32.23. He was speaking not to the heathen, not to the unbelieving, but to his own people. Those who had promised to follow and promised to obey him. If we tolerate sin in our lives, God warrants we can be sure our sin will find us out. Christians are those who have shuddered at the awfulness of their sin because they have seen the holiness of their God. They have seen his justice in dealing with sin at Calvary. They are people who have repented of their sin and turned from it because they have seen sin for what it is, a willful rebellion against the rulership of God over their lives. And in turning from their sin, they have embraced God's only means of dealing with sin, which is death and resurrection of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, on their behalf. Because of this identification with Christ, God cannot overlook sin in our lives. Therefore, he, our Holy Father, will see that our sin will find us out. How the Church of Jesus Christ needs to hear this, that we might fear our God. How we need to remember that our God is immutable, he changes not. God is the same yesterday. When Achan, Achan, you know, I love when I start throwing a Hebrew, you know, accent into some of the English written words because people go, that's not how you say it. I go, well, okay. <laughs> so if I say it twice, once is like maybe in the Hebrew way and once might be in the English transformation way. So Achan, when Achan disobeyed God and selfishly gathered up some of the spoils of war after the fall of Jericho, which God had expressly forbidden the Israelites to do, Achan, Achan's sin found him out, and God withdrew his protection. As a result, the children of Israel were defeated at Ai. 
all because there was sin in the camp. See Joshua 6, 7. God is the same today. Jesus warned his disciples, beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. But there is nothing covered up that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Accordingly, whatsoever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in the inner realms will be proclaimed upon the housetops. Luke 12, 1-3. Hypocrisy means wearing a mask. It is pretending to be one thing when in reality you are another. The Pharisees were those who pretended to be righteous, but inwardly they were not. In describing the Pharisees' hypocrisy in Matthew 23, Jesus said that they cleaned the outside of a cup and a dish, but left the inside dirty, full of robbery and self-indulgence. 23:25. Outwardly they appeared righteous to others, but inwardly they were full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. 23:28. And then he said, How will you escape the sentence of hell? 23:33. Nothing is hidden from God. We cannot pretend to be righteous on the outside, while inside we are filled with unrighteousness. We can be sure our sin will find us out. The justice of God, the righteousness of God, the very character of God requires it. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession. You know, one of the things that we used to love doing in the Jesus movement, which we don't I don't see anybody doing anymore, is, you know, Hey, bro, you know, like, man, what, what's really got you today? I mean, are you in lust or what? You know, I said, I could pray for you. You know, we could work on that one. You know, and nobody really walks up and, you know, talks to you that way and, you know, responds in such a way that you can just be as transparent as that to say, hey, you know, I had a problem. I was in porno, you know, or I was uh, pop up, popped up on my computer and suddenly I was, you know, like tempted to participate or worse than that. I participated, you know, and I went right into it and I got all kinds of viruses and worms all over my computer. <laughs> well, maybe that's God showing you where you shouldn't be. <laughs> if the reality of what the Christian statistics are about divorce, about sin, about porno, about men, about women, about our relationships, about how we treat our children, about the breakdown of the family, then we're failing because we're not honest. We're not being truthful. And the sin that is so easily besetting us is trying to be covered up by what we think we need to do rather than what we should do. It's very simple when you sin. Admit it. God already knows. You can't hide it. He sees you when you're in the bathroom. I mean, come on now, let's get real. <laughs> he sees you every moment of the day. But the sad part is, is that because Jesus is inside you, you take Jesus with you when you sin. Yesterday in devotional, I sinned. You know, I, I freely admitted it. I shared it and said, hey, you know what? I'm just as much a sinner or worse than most of you. And that's what God is trying to say is that it's not so much that you sin and that you need to stop sinning because in reality, a righteous man falleth down seven times and rises up again. So your sin and the body of sin that you live in will probably be with you till the day you die. Now, you're going to slowly, gradually make progress on some things because God is working on you and in you. But you're living in a dead body that will constantly be going after sin to separate itself from God because this dead body can't tolerate the holiness that's inside you. Oh, you're not holy outside. You're just as disgusting as I am. <laughs> I can tell. I can look at you. I can look in the mirror. I can read the Bible. Guess what? <laughs> For all of sin falls short of the glory of God. All, not any, not after salvation, you know, or somehow after salvation, you know, we no longer are all of sin. No, every day we are sinners because we're saved by grace. Otherwise, we will get to a place of being the leaven of the Pharisees and we'll think that we're holy when we're not. You're not perfect and neither am I. So God just says, look, deal with it. Simple. You sin, ask forgiveness. If we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And move on. Yes, the consequence, our mother. <laughs> you don't like it, and neither do I. You know, you thought you were going to get away with it. No, you're not. Just like it says, your sin will find you out. 
the part of the sin that finds you out is that the consequences of sin is separation. The part that finds you out sometimes is that you are going to be real obvious because you're no longer full of the joy, the love, and the peace because you're separated from that sustenance or that connection with God until you do the next day or the before the night goes down, confess your sins and get a right relationship with the Lord. It's that fast. He already knew you did it. He already paid the price. You're already forgiven. You just need to make that real in your life to know that your Father loves you, not that He's going to beat you up. But if you don't confess your sins, if you don't seek Him, if you don't walk with Him, guess what? Like a cancer that festers, you're going to get bitter, not better. You're going to slowly show that the farther you are away from God, the harder it is to come back to Him. And the farther that you think you got to run, He hasn't changed His love for you. Because even as He's still righteous, and even as He's still holy, He's still loving. So when you do finally come back, when you do finally confess, when you do finally get it over with and get on with God, guess what? He doesn't remember it anymore. It was cast as far away as the east is from the west because of what Jesus did. So why bother with it? Why deal with it? Why feel that angst? Go on with God and you won't sin. Or at least you'll know how to deal with it. And that's the most important thing. How you deal with your personal sin is between you and God. And you need to confess it. How I deal with mine is, I did it. <laughs> help. <laughs> and then I go right to where my source of help is, as you should.